Hi, everyone. How are you doing today? Um, I've got a glare here. It's true. Close the blind. There we go. That's better. So, how are you today? I am doing so much better than I was last night, if you saw our video of last night. Um, as many of you know, I had some technical difficulties yesterday with um, some videos and so forth. So everything's back up and running and they're in there. And I know they didn't get back up until last evening. I had um, I, I had some problems and the videos got deleted. So they're back up and they're, they're good to go. Um, been a little slow on getting assignments in today. So I'm not sure if that's because of the videos last night and things like that, but everything's up and going. So remember, reading, math, and spelling are not optional. Okay, so I'm going to be filling out report cards and it's going to see if you participated or didn't participate in your work. So you need to make sure you're doing those things. Okay, all right, so here we are. Chapter 49, what do you want, Miggery Sal? Again, reader, we must go forward before we go backward. We must consider for a moment what had occurred with the rat and the serving girl and the princess down in the dungeon before Despero made his way to them. What happened was this. Roscoro led the pea and Meg into the dungeon to a hidden chamber, and there he directed Meg to put the princess in chains. Gore, said Meg. She's going to have a hard time learning her lessons if she all chained up like. Do as I say, said Roscoro. Maybe, said Meg, before I lock her up and her and me, we could switch outfits. So we could start in already with her being me and me being a princess. Oh, yes, said Roscoro. Certainly. What a wonderful idea, Miss Miggery. Princess, take off your crown and give it to the serving girl. The pea sighed and took off her crown and handed it to Meg. And Meg put it on, and it slid immediately right down her very small head. And it came to rest quite painfully on her very poor and abused ears. Remember, Uncle would give her clouts to the ears, so her, he had, she had those cauliflower ears that were very, very painful. It's a biggish thing, she said, and it's painful like. Well, well, said Roscoro. How do I look? Meg asked smiling at him. Now imagine the crown is slid down over her eyes, it's sitting on her big cauliflower ears. Do you think Roscoe is going to tell her she looks beautiful? Ridiculous, he said. Um, laughable, actually. Meg stood blinking back tears. You mean I, I don't look like a princess? She said to the rat. I mean, said Roscoe, you will never look like a princess. No matter how big a crown you put on your tiny little head, you look exactly like the fool you are and always will be. Now make yourself useful and chain the princess up. Dress up time is over. Meg sniffed and wiped her eyes and then bent to look at the pile of chains and locks on the floor. And now, princess, he said, I am afraid that the time for your truth has arrived. I will now tell you what your future holds. As you consigned me to the darkness, so I consigned you, too, to a life spent in the dungeon. Meg looked up. Boy, ain't she going to go upstairs and be a serving girl? No, said Roscoe. Well, ain't I going to go upstairs and be princess? No, said Roscoe. But I, I want to be princess. No one cares what you want. Roscoe says, no one. As you know, reader, Miggery Sow had heard the sentiment expressed many times in her short life, but now in the dungeon it hit her full force. The rat was right. No one cared what she wanted. No one had ever cared, and perhaps worst of all, no one ever would care. I want, cried Meg. Shh, said the princess. Shut up said the rat. I want, sobbed Meg. I want, I want. What do you want, Meg? said the princess softly. Eh? shouted Meg. What do you want, Miggery Sow? the princess shouted. 
don't ask her that, said Roscoe. Shut up, shut up, shut up. But it was too late. The words had been said and the question at last had been asked. The world stopped spinning and all of creation held its breath, waiting to hear what it was that Migri Sow wanted. So here in this illustration, you can see uh, the princess is ac actually asking Migri Sow what it is she wants. And you see in the foreground here, Russ Girl. I want, said Meg. Yes, shouted the pea. I want my ma, cried Meg into the silent waiting world. I want my ma. Oh, said the princess. She held her hand and held it to Meg. She told, and sorry, let me try that again. She held it out. She held out her hand to Meg and Meg took hold of it. I want my mother too, said the princess softly. And she squeezed Meg's hand. Stop it, shouted Russ Girl. Chain her up, chain her up. Gore, said Meg. I ain't going to do it. You ain't and you can't make me. I got the knife, don't I? She took the knife and held it up. If you have any sense at all, Russ Girl said, and I heartily doubt that you do, you will not use that instrument on me. Without me, you will never find your way out of the dungeon and you will starve to death here or worse. Goer, said Meg. Then lead us out here now or I'll chop you up into little ratty bits. No, said Roscoe. The princess shall stay here in the darkness and you, Meg, will stay here with her. But I want to go upstairs, said Meg. I'm afraid that we are stuck here, Meg shouted the princess, unless the rat has a change of heart and he decides to lead us out. There will be no change of heart, said Roscoe. None. Gore, said Meg. She lowered the knife. And so the rat and the princess and the serving girl sat together in the dungeon as outside the castle the sun rose, moved across the sky, and sank to the earth again, and night fell. They sat together until the candle had burned out and another one had to be lit. They sat together in the dungeon. They sat and they sat. And reader, thankfully, they might be sitting there still if a mouse had not arrived. Okay, so if somebody asked me today, what do I want? There's a couple things I want. I want to be at school, but I can't be. I want some a little bit warmer weather. That would be nice, right? But what I am getting, which is a good thing that I want, is that all the people that I care about, and you guys included, are healthy and safe until we can all be together again real soon. Okay, so make sure you're getting your work done. Okay, they're not optional. Get in there, get that reading, that math, and that spelling done because there'll be new assignments coming out to you tomorrow, okay? Have a good evening, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Maybe tomorrow at our Google Meet, 12-15. Okay, see ya.